Coach, let you guys fire away with questions. All right, Coach, you came in, kind of a clean slate. Which of the linebackers have impressed you the most so far? Yeah, uh, the, the three veterans that have been, been around, uh, Easton, Mason, and, and Eric, uh, have been probably the three from a leadership standpoint and from just kind of understanding the, the new structure, the new terminology, have really kind of understood it the quickest and are, are seeing more impact plays from those three. Easton's done a really good job of being our mic, uh, kind of leading the, the communication on the field, uh, but excited about both Mason and Eric, and, you know, the playmaking ability, making some, some big time plays for us at different times. Because we've thrown a lot at them already uh, in the first you know three weeks, um, you know, multiple coverages. And then every day you're gonna see, we're gonna have to defend plenty of offense every day from Coach Riley and the, and the offense here. So um, I feel like we've improved. Um, I don't know if that means we're any, we're, we're good. It just means that we're getting better. And then one other thing for me, uh, Danton Lynn's talked about using the spring to develop an identity defensively. Yep. Do you feel like your room has an identity right now? Well, I think I think big picture, looking for the identity for the defense. Um, you know, I think within kind of a subculture within our room, I think our guys are creating some continuity. Um, with cohesiveness in there. Uh, I really like how guys like Eric and, and Mason and Easton are, are leaning into and helping guys like uh, Dez and uh, Elijah Newby, some of our younger kids continue to develop because at some point, special teams or defense, we're going to need those guys to step up. Eric has such a unique skill set <laughs> and, and body. How, yep. How do you feel like that fits the way you like to use linebackers, the way this system likes to well, use linebackers? Well, you know, it, it, it is definitely, he's atypical. I mean, you want big, long athletes. Um, you typically don't have a six-six linebacker, but he can impact some things. He's got rush value. Uh, he, he's big in zones. I mean, it, you know, when we're playing just some big zone defense, he, all of a sudden his arms go from the hash to the numbers. I mean, he's just he's just a big body out there. Um, I think we're going to continue to find some other sub packages, uh, ways to utilize his, because he's twitchy too. I mean, he's not just a big, long kid, but he runs well. He understands football, asks some tremendous questions in meetings, always trying to get better. Does, as a coach, are you kind of like challenging yourself to be like, okay, how can we fix our, or not fix, but like kind of change what we've normally done to accommodate well, I think, someone I think, like him? Well, a little bit. Trying to find ways that we can utilize him. Right now, he's playing both Sam and Will. And so, Trying to really kind of push the envelope. He's a veteran. He's been around. He's he's, he's been on the grass in big big situations. Let's see what he can do. Um, not necessarily trying to overload him, but kind of get him out of his comfort zone. Someone like Elijah Nobi was already kind of in a great class. By yep. the time you got hired, what have you learned about him? Uh, you know, was was naturally more of an edge kid in, in the high school level. Um, a little raw playing off the football, but uh, the upside is that. He has great football IQ, understands the game, and is very intentional about questions and watching film and you know being around the veterans. You know, and, that, and you hear questions when I'm talking to someone over here. He's asking one of our veterans wants to be good, and I think that's a huge indicator of, of just unlimited ceiling for that young man. What's the challenge for Rajon being limited in the spring? <laughs> well, he has two bad hands right now: a bad wrist and a bad hand. You know, limited in contact, really only getting reps in seven on seven and nine contact situations. Just one of those unfortunate deals happened like day two or three, raced himself, probably didn't want to use his bad wrist, and all of a sudden, you know, had a slight fracture in his hand. So um, makes you sick when, when players get hurt, and that's the negative part of the game. With Eric, I know there's always been talk about his weight and how yep. much weight he needs to gain. Is that something you, you guys are continuing Pushing to the envelope, yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we talk about it consistently. You know, he's 220 now. Um, when I came out and watched bull prep, he wasn't 220 by any means. So we're, we're in a good spot, but he knows that there, there's probably another 5 to 10 pounds in there. Um, big, long kid. I don't, think, I don't think it'll impact his suddenness or his ability to run or change direction. Coach, has it been a big adjustment for you, kind of subjugating yourself from a head coach mentality to – Assistant head coach, position uh, yeah, coach. Yeah, it, it, it has been. Um, it's been a good thing for me. I know, you know, when you're a head coach, you're worried about everybody. Uh, now I get to worry about, you know, a room and, and, and a little bit the defense overall. Uh, you know, I kind of smile at times when coach has those moments or has those issues. Like, that, that's on you now. Yeah. But uh, no, it, he, he's allowed me to interject and to, and, and to ask questions, and he's come and asked me. So 
you know, probably allows me to still at times put that head coaching hat on or, you know, maybe how we'd have done things differently or if I have any thoughts on how we can adjust practice. But it's been good. I, I've really enjoyed, you know, my, my first three months here. And when it comes to recruiting, have you had to change your, your style, you know, recruiting for USC compared well, to? Well, you know, I think you know, at my last institution and this one, you're, you, you have a brand at both that's that's known from coast to coast. Um, you know, here, you know, it's it's, it's just a, a, a bigger pull. You're, you're recruiting a different style of kid. But I, kids are kids. It doesn't matter if they come from Southern Cal or if they're in Fargo, North Dakota. You know, they, they, they want to win. They want, they want to be around people that care. Uh, they want to be somewhere that's going to help develop them so they can be the best version of themselves. And I think that's the thing that we're, we're, we're selling right now, especially as a defensive staff, is this is a place where you, you're going to get on the front end front end of something that's building and growing daily right now. I know Lincoln felt that those statements was kind of under What was he showing us? I'm really excited about, about his development. I mean, he's 235 right now. He moves really well. He, he's one of those kids that you know, didn't know a lot about him, but you get him on the grass, he just kind of has that, nat he understands football, uh, he kind of has a natural feel for it, uh, and that's not always the case. Uh, you know, the transition from high school to college can be a huge step for a lot of kids, and he's made it pretty gracefully right now, and now it's just getting him out of his comfort zone, continuing to, to, to push him uh, to better himself. How do, you, how do you feel like Easton and uh, Eric just complement one another with their size differences? Well, you know, I think, you know, Easton is, is, you know, kind of a prototypical Mike in, in what we're looking to do. Very headsy, very smart. It was Pac-12, all Pac-12 last year at Oregon State and um, is a perfectionist. Uh, and then you got, you know, a guy like Eric who, you know, plays multiple spots. And Eric is all about the next play is the most important one. And so they complement each other because we need them both to be a little bit, you know, you got to learn, learn, burn, return. If the last play is not great. Learn from it. Let's get. We got to get back to the next one. We can't let it influence or impact. You know, us getting better on the next play. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Bet. you. Is your voice usually like this three weeks in? Uh, it's usually like this every day after practice. <laughs> so, you guys are. Hey, this is what it's like on a nice spring day in Fargo. So. <laughs>